Good morning, I'm Earth Dr. Reese Halter, and you're listening to EarthCast, SOS.com. Tough news this morning. Only 7% of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, which is an area three-quarters of my home state of California, has avoided coral bleaching. No! The final results of extensive aerial and underwater surveys revealed that 93% of the reef has been affected. My colleague, Professor Terry Hughes, who heads up the National Coral Bleaching Task Force, told me that we've never seen anything like this scale of bleaching before. In the northern Great Barrier Reef, it's like 10 cyclones have come ashore all at once. Towards the southern end, most of the reefs have minor to moderate bleaching and should soon recover. 911 reefs were surveyed along the entire length of 1,429 miles. Only 68 reefs have escaped bleaching entirely. 316 reefs showed my colleagues extreme bleaching between 60 and 100% of the corals were overcome with intense ocean temperatures. Bleaching is extreme along the top 621 miles of the Great Barrier Reef. Hughes relayed this information to me. Tragically, the extreme bleaching occurred on the most remote part of the reef, and its remoteness has protected it from most human pressures, but not the climate in crisis. North of Port Douglas, we've already measured an average of close to 50% death of bleached corals. At some reefs, the final death toll is likely to exceed 90%. When bleaching is this severe, it affects all coral species, including old, slow-growing corals that once lost will take many decades to return, if at all. The Great Barrier Reef has faced three bleaching events in the past 16 years, 1998, 2002, and 2016. They all coincided with where the hottest water sat for the longest period of time. The southerly one-third of the Great Barrier Reef was fortunately cooled down late in summer by cloudy weather caused by the ex-cyclone Winston. I predict that because the minister for the environment, for the time being, Greg Hunt, over the past six months, has greenlighted the Shenhua Watermark coal mine along New South Wales Liverpool Plains, rich agricultural lands, and the Adani Carmichael coal mine in Queensland, along with the approval of the expansion of a coal terminal in Abbott Point, Queensland, to make it the biggest coal port on earth, that Hunt and the Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, along with the rest of the Liberal government, will lose the July federal elections. Environmental groups, concerned citizens, scientists, mums, dads, children, are fed up with the environment and many other social issues finishing last with this current neoconservative government. In the meantime, I want you to think about this. What we do to the Great Barrier Reef, the largest living organism on the globe, we do to ourselves. Burning fossil fuels is both raising ocean temperatures and increasing ocean acidity. Unless very stringent actions take place now, my colleagues are predicting that all coral reefs globally could be gone, dead, by 2040. If corals die, one quarter of all fish species, that's 4,000 different kinds, will die. And essential nursery grounds, corals, corals are essential nursery grounds, for sharks, dolphins, porpoises, whales, sea turtles, and more than one million species of plants and animals that live along coral reefs. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we cannot live on earth, our home, if the corals die. We need leaders in government who get this now and place the health of our oceans at the top of the list. Hashtag save nature now. Hashtag love nature. Hashtag love is the solution. Earthcast SOS depends upon you, the listeners. So come on to drreese.com. D-R Reese. R E E S E dot com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click on the donate button, or pick yourself up any number of terrific books on bees, trees, seas, or wild weather. Just do it. DrReese.com. I'm Earth Dr. Reese Halter, reminding you to protect our planets.